welcome to Studio Sunday. Hi. It is so hot here. Yeah. It's August or August. August. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard that before. Yeah. Well, yeah we're, but, at, we're at the bottom of the state, so, you know, we're in the South. The, yeah, we are in the South. We're in the drain of the United States. I wouldn't say that. Yeah, it goes like that. I think it's a pretty great place to be. It is nice. It's in the middle. It's in the center of the country. It's in it's, the center. Everything's just three hours away. We never hours. shovel snow. That's true. We never shovel snow. Not that we would anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? It's not as hot as the sketches being added to the 100 sketches for the Terry Moore Live. Ooh. How do you like that? Thank you. Thank How's you. it going over there, Terry? Uh, it's going pretty good. Uh, it was the one oh, I did last week. Oh, you got some great sketches this week like that one there. Thank you. What are you up to now? About 80, 85? Uh, no, I, I blew way past 100. Oh, did you? Yeah, yeah. Oh, fantastic. We're into the thousands. You know, 100's a lot. Yes, it is. I'm, oh man, who's came up with 100? I, I think it must have been you. I guess you really know what you're doing, you know, to be able to pace it properly, to get 100 done. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's a lot of sketches to add to the sketchbook. You must be a professional. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> he got it, honey. He oh, got it. okay. I'll just keep drawing and see what I end up with. That's my goal. I'm just gonna just keep keep my head down and just see where we end up. Maybe I'll get 120. My goal is that you get those done, or the studio doors close and food comes under the door to you. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. I am an artistic prisoner. <laughs> Good news on the 2021 sketchbook. Woohoo! Finally. We need it. It ships to us on this, this coming Friday the 13th, which, you know, gave me pause there for just a second. We don't need any added yeah, pressure. The guy in the hockey mask is going to deliver yeah. them. Um, but they should ship on Friday. We should have them Tuesday or Wednesday. Okay. And we'll start sending them out right away. We are ready to go, guys. We have the boxes made, the bubble wrap torn, and... We're just at the ready. We're just waiting. Yeah. And I'm sure you guys are all ready as well. You guys have been so understanding and patient through this whole thing. It has just been Thank chaos you. behind the scenes. Yes, it has. <laughs> I, we have never stopped a book like that before. No. Ever. Um, so the difference is night and day. It's, it's going to be worth it. When this is all over, who will remember the delay? They'll just see the book. I'll remember the delay <laughs> in detail. <laughs> no, I, nobody remembers Sergeant Pepper's was nine months late. <laughs> so are you comparing this to a Beatles album? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, oh, yeah. That's a right, good, right wow, up. that's a great, great start right there. <laughs> Just blew right by the Beatles. Aye, yeah. aye. Oh. Okay, Serial Issue 6 will be in stores and on our website on the 18th. Only four issues left in this series, so don't miss it. Things are happening now, so he's getting a little tense. Yeah, the, the chase is on. Yeah, you can catch up. Um, if you've missed a couple of issues, you can catch up with the trade paperback that came out a couple weeks ago called The Glass Tomb. Um, and then we'll do a second trade paperback at the end, as well as our usual omnibus situation. So, That's a great title. You thought of that title. I did. The Glass Tomb. And if you don't know what a glass tomb is, you need to read the book. There you go. Uh, what else is going on? Oh, okay. So you guys, I don't know if you know this, but we are getting some serious pressure from artists, friends, and readers to do a Kickstarter. It's crazy. Yeah. Some of our friends ambushed us during Comic-Con at home a couple weeks ago. An intervention. And they've been harassing us ever since. <laughs> so I guess if we don't do one, they're just going to put one up for us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it looks like we'll be doing a Kickstarter when Serial is finished. Um... So my question as the publisher is, what would you guys like to see? We're leaning towards a new Strangers in Paradise graphic novel set somewhere in the middle of the original series with the original characters. So somewhere in the middle there. Um, we also have thought about a cover gallery with all of the covers from all your series. Which is a lot. Which it ends up being about, it would end up being about 400 pages if you do a uh, one page with the uncolored version and the facing page 
with the actual cover. Mm -hmm. So we're thinking about that too, but we're not opposed to a brand new title. Um, so let us know what you guys think because we want it to be successful and we want to make a product that you guys want. Yeah, what you want. So let us know. Yeah, because I could, you know, we have multiple directions, um, but I don't want to wander down that way if um, you really, really wish I would do this. So let me know if you have a strong opinion. Yeah, so that'll be uh, fun to see what everybody wants I us know. to do. They may say Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Spider-Man it is. Uh, leave comments, email us, you know, just let us know. Uh, you have, you know, you know how to reach us. Okay, so that's it for me today. Okay. Anything to add, Mr. Moore? Uh, no, I'm doing sketches and uh, in the art section uh, today, I'll talk about this sketch and the different... Do you think you should be having this page out here? Yes, I, I do, because I was talking about the difference between drawing hard during the day and beauty at night. Oh, okay. Such because a weird that's life. kind of a big spoiler, isn't it? Nah, not this one. The next page is a huge spoiler. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So are you ready to get on the hot seat? Yeah. Every seat is hot here right now. So. Oh, I know. Are you on the hot seat? I always. When do you get a turn on the hot seat? I, I am so calm and cool that the hot seat is never hot for me. So, Robin, tell us about the lost years. <laughs> <laughs> they are yet to come. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Good. I like so that. So far, I have not lost any. Oh, okay. They are yet to come. All right. Okay. You ready for your first question? I know. I think this question is very timely since you're wrapping up cereal. When you're developing a new series, how much does your audience influence you? This is so timely from what we just asked. <laughs> not at all. Them. We never ask the audience what they want. <laughs> are you writing what you want or do you consider sales? Uh, when I'm working at the table, I write what I want, no doubt about it. Uh, because if you get it the other way around, you're, you're, you're a head case and you're a mess. And you'll never get it right because half the audience doesn't like that, whatever it is you do. So you have to draw for yourself. You have to hope that you have a good batting average, that your guesses are good, that you're, what you're doing is appealing to an audience. So um, a lot of times books... Uh, that you may like are made in the first place because the writer could not find it somewhere um, and they couldn't find it um, so they make it for themselves you know um, if you could find it that means that it was in such demand that everybody made it you know so that's kind of a strange way to say but I I, I do think that I I definitely follow my instincts and then hope that I have good instincts and then I look at it and I'm thinking more about the sales, and then I'll say, why don't you tweak this here, or yes, maybe you shouldn't do this, or maybe you should do that. Yeah, and I need you. every artist needs that editorial feedback, because maybe my desire is to have everybody jump off a, off a bridge on page five, and they said, well, you, you've ruined your story. What are you going to do? And I said, I don't know, but what a great moment. I just felt it, you know, and I've ruined the whole story. So you do need that feedback, that editorial feedback. And, Robin and we've is, had a couple of those yeah. big moments mm -hmm. in Strangers in Paradise where you jumped off the cliff and I said, oh, wait a minute there, big boy. She reached out and grabbed me. Whoa, 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 whoa. Were you, I feel like a, you know, a child in an amusement park and the parent is going, And whoa. he's always indignant with me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> No, everybody jumps. <laughs> it's time to jump. And you go, no, no, Kachu doesn't jump. <laughs> so, yeah, you, you know, it's a push and pull. And that's just the creative process, you know. Um, that's part of the fun of it. But yeah, I think it needs to start with a good idea. And hopefully that's coming from the artist. Okay, so the second question. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. ha this is interesting. Have you ever considered changing your drawing style? Maybe just using markers like Paul Pope or maybe a more cartoony style like Scotty Young. Is it difficult to get out of your usual style? Man, what a great question. That really cuts the heart of the matter. Um, I started off cartoony. And, you know, the first few issues of Strangers in Paradise looked like a segue between cartoonist to trying to switch to comic book artist. And then now, I draw in this particular stuff, my modern style, and Robin will often say, you know, I liked it better when you were all brush and there was more body language. Um, so it's a constant, 
it's a constant thing as the artist evolves are they getting better or are they just wandering off um so yeah that's a constant and i think that's where a lot of artistic um when they dive into themselves into their own heads and try to figure out every day like what is the best thing i can do you know what is what is what what is the progression in the right direction with my art it's hard because i'm not an artist at all <laughs> not want to be somebody say I wouldn't want somebody to say to me oh you draw like Scotty Young right right that's or, the kiss of death yeah that you have no future that's if you draw just like Jim Lee we don't need you we already have Jim Lee <laughs> if you draw like Scotty we already have a Scotty or so um, that's not what you want if you're a professional if you're an amateur and you love Scotty and you love his art and he's your inspiration and you want to figure that out that's perfect that's a, that's what a lot of everybody every artist i know went through that phase before they went pro they have their inspirations they learn how to do that and then they pull like 12 inspirations together and come up with a new hybrid that's them you know and then they put themselves into it and then that's how you get scotty scotty is um, downstream of probably a hundred influences that he had growing up, you know, and he comes up with his own style. Um, and, you know, so that's how it works. So the problem is, like, as, as you keep going over the years, do you keep changing your style? So it's tricky. Um, I think it's better for comic book artists to evolve because they can just get better and better, become better illustrators. And I try to do that. But it's a balance between you know, are you accurate or are you fun to look at? Comic books need to be fun to look at. You're not just an architect. Detect. So it's a, it's a balancing act and that's part of what the artist walks around thinking about all the time. So your answer to the question is stay in your lane. Stay in your lane, but have a wide lane and make it yours. Um, I still, you can look in my books and there will be a cartoony, I think in this one there's a cartoony section where they dream or something and I like to play different styles. One of the things I did in Strangers in Paradise in particular, not the others, if the moment got lighthearted, the, the art got more cartoony. If the moment became very serious, the art got very graphic. Um, and that's, I, I wanted my lane that wide in that title. When I got to like Rachel Rising, everything looks the same. So, well, speaking of Strangers <clears throat> in Paradise, when you had this on your drawing table, um, and I, you said, "Oh, that came straight out of Strangers in Paradise." You need to tell them about that, where that image came uh, from. Oh, yeah, this this image here is the one I drew last night, and um, this little rude thing, and it actually comes from this. Uh, this particular trade paperback collection of Strangers in Paradise. Where Which is no longer available. <laughs> no longer available. You cannot buy this. <laughs> so I'm a terrible marketer. But you can get the collection books. Anyway, this comes from a, a segment of the story where um, Kachu and David are leaving Las Vegas. And Kachu got a new tattoo and they're having a sweet goodbye. And she flashes her tattoo at him. And while she's doing that, the the, uh, the art lady to the side says, Madam, how rude. No, she says, young lady, have you no decency? And Kachu says, Madam, if you had my ass, you'd show everyone too. <laughs> it sounds better when you say it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, glad that that was cute. So yeah, this is kind of a, was, so that's a look back. Is. Yeah. Okay. Okay, well, uh, so what are you drawing today? Uh, I'm going to show how I polished this sketch and what I looked for in it and um, how weird it is for me right now to be drawing these beautiful sketches at night but during the day I'm drawing this horror series and I'm drawing I'm having to think about beautiful faces that are 90 years old how do you get a face to, to look 90 and where where's the age and all that and then I go from that that simple idea to Bernie Wrightson horror expressions and things like that. It's so fun. Okay. okay. Well, um, that's it for me. You guys have a great week and stay tuned. Terry will show you what he's drawing. Okay. Maybe here. 
Okay, so I went over the sketch with a number four and just kind of made the line, the, the lines bold to emphasize where the motion is, like that. And then some lines, like this arm is all in uh, forward perspective, so it needs to be part of the bolder lines so that it has the foreground. Get that hair off there. The arm is in front of the hair. Um, did you see how, um, I'm gonna show you something real quick. If I'm, right now I'm not warmed up, but if I go slow, I tend to, you know, make these slower lines. So if I go fast, faster, it makes those smoother lines. And if I'm too careful, I get that kind of line, you know. It has these little squiggles in it. But if you, you don't want that, of course. So in order to do the hand, that's why you see people tend to, okay. And I think of it like a ski run. You go down to the next, that section, then go to that section, then go to that section. You know what I mean? As opposed to careful. <laughs> like that. <laughs> that's what I would draw like if I just went slow. So anyway, that's why you see me and other people do it like that. Um, sometimes it's just a matter of, okay, let's just get the body right. Elbow point up there, and then turn the hips, and so the hip bones are going at this angle, like that. And then the shoulders are going at a weird angle. You can't even see that back shoulder, but that arm is over there, and this arm is up here. What a weird angle, right? So somehow your eye figures this out, because you know the human anatomy whether you can draw it or not. And you know that there's another shoulder over there and it's dipped and you can see that. Um, I just thought I'd point that out. That was the challenge in this drawing. Um, the other challenge is to get, to get it so that the, you have such extreme angles that versus that. So how do you get it so that um, this is not too far out? And it's such a desire to to cheat and pull pull this in, but if you do, you really mess up the whole drawing. Um, this is really accurate. That's accurate. Um, you just need to trust the fact that here's the middle of the back, and somehow the middle of the back got right there when it was time. So the middle of the back is actually around this corner over here. <laughs> It's not right there. It's it's several inches over on the other side. So you're having to picture that in 3D space, like 3D modeling. If you were able to, um, if you were working on uh, a, a digital drawing program, you would have your upper body like this, your lower body like that. There's the bottom. And typically, here's the body. So now this one is going like that, and that one's going like that. Does that make sense? So the middle of the spine is over here on the other side. That's the cheapest little drawing model I can think of. <laughs> I'm drawing horror stories during the day and then beautiful sketches at night. And the sketches are for the October uh, live art sale event that we're having, of course. I'm trying to get 100 of them. Uh, this is number like 33 or something. So, but during the day, I spend my day drawing axes and consequences. <laughs> and it just struck me so strange in the life of an artist how, um, you know, you work so hard to learn how to draw some, a beautiful face. And then in horror, you need to know how to age the face, right? This is the same lady. She's in the nursing home. Uh, this is the mother of my serial killer in the story serial. 
Um, she's in a nursing home. She looks out the window. She doesn't talk. Uh, she's had a stroke. And um, this is the only way we've seen her. <clears throat> but for the first time, you see a picture of her when she was in her prime. So here is this lovely lady. Uh, used to be, um, well, what they called them back then, stewardesses, uh, a flight attendant. But this is very old. It's from Pan Am. So, you, you know, it's in the 50s and 60s. So it's one of those, you know, something your, your grandmother did, right? Back in her day, back in 1960. And I had to get from that. I was drawing this face first. And then I thought, what does this face look like young? So if you look at the way the eyes are, I drew the eyes with the heavy top, um, the same arc of the eyebrow, the same basic face before it fell, before the jowls set in, and before all the extra uh, skin collects on the neck and gives you the turkey neck. So um, if you take all that stuff away, you get this lovely lady. <laughs> And to me, just this right here is a horror story. I mean, nobody wants to get old and uh, go from this to this, but it's life, right? So it's just something we have to accept. Um, but there's a horror aspect to it. I mean, it's not something we embrace or, or volunteer for. It just happens. And then you take that tired face and then start yelling like you just saw Swamp Thing, and next thing you know, you have a wonderful Bernie Wrightson drawing. <laughs> So trying to figure out how the face ages and where the jowls are, what starts dropping um, matters a lot. And then get that face animated and um, thinking of the, the arthritis that warps the fingers. This fing these fingers right here remind me of Keith Richards. <laughs> His hand looks like this. I don't know how he still plays guitar. The guy is incredible. Um, but you take that lovely face, age it about 60 years, and then have her cry out in distress, and she has missing teeth. Um, right there, let's define that a little more. You start losing teeth as you get older. Uh, the eyes are a little bit unfocused because you can't see. Um, and this lady has lost her ability to speak because of a stroke. And you're just finding somebody at their worst. I see a line that needs to be right here. That line is missing. Let's put it in so I don't forget it. I need to do it right now while I remember it. And then this is the wheelchair behind her that she's leaning against. Okay, I have a problem here in that we know there is a wheelchair handle right there. Uh, which way does it go? Probably goes like that. Because the whole time the wheelchair has been pointed this way, so that so the pushing handle is back here like this. Now the problem is, if I actually put that there, it sort of interferes with the hand. You need it for the realism. If this was animation, you can't just ignore it. In cartooning on paper, a lot of times people will just wipe that out and let it fade away. It's as if you pulled focus and focused on the hand and the uh, handle went away in the soft focus background. But the best you can do is to emphasize the fingers with a boulder, with boulder ink so that they definitely claim the foreground. That is the prominent object. And then uh, do the background in a fine line so that it has much, much less priority like that. So that's my solution. Um, I can't show you any more of this page, I don't think, because there's a spoiler at the bottom of it. So anyway, that's kind of um, where I've been with the art. Uh, one last thing before we get um, um, through with this little miscellaneous session. <laughs> I wanted to show you the smallest piece of art that I have. This is the smallest piece of art that I made. It's a portrait that I'm uh, scratched out with a um, uh, a needle point, and I did it on black photographic paper, and then cut it and put it in this old 35 millimeter slide case. 
And I've had this since probably I was 20. I probably did it. So there's the size of it. And I just have it in my drawer over here. And then I have one other piece that's nearly that small, maybe even smaller. And this is a piece of scrimshaw that I did back when you could still get pieces of scrimshaw in Hawaii. Uh, if you can see it, there's a little boy standing on a cliff looking out at sea. And there's the sunrise behind him. And this is a scrimshaw piece from a watercolor that I did uh, called uh, Gods at Sea, where the little boy is watching whales um, leave. Uh, they're going out to sea. And I always thought, I thought it was romantic that, you know, the whales were the gods of the sea. So anyway, I still have these two little pieces in my drawer. So they just got, they're very old. I've had them since, you know, I was just out of school when I made them. And um, it's just kind of like the little things that, you know, you're used to seeing in your drawer. <laughs> I bet some of you have um, art pieces like that that you've kept. And... You know, you can't sell them. You don't intend to sell them. They're just your little keepsakes for life to remind you who you are and who you were. And uh, where, in the case of dreams, where you think you're going. So they're a steady reminder of where you are in life and where you need to go and where you were. Okay. Um, I hope you guys have had a good week. I hope some of this has been informative. And um, I'll see you next week. Okay, I'm going to point out one other thing before we go. Um, did you notice that I changed the angle on my drawing board? That I raised it up? It was hard to do on this heavy drawing board because I have these wooden feet down here. And, you know, it's, it's a house construction to get this thing raised. <laughs> but I did it. And um, so now I've got the board at a better angle so that when I'm looking down, I'm looking straight at the, the art. When I had the board at this angle, like you're, you look at any previous video, you will see the board was at more of this angle. Well, the problem with this angle is that um, it's fine if I'm drawing a small space right here, but when I'm drawing vertical, here to here to here, and this qualifies. So I'm drawing, and the board was at that angle. Look. I'm trying to figure out the perspective from top to bottom, and I kept getting big heads and small bodies because I was never able to see them at the same. And then you would, I would scan them, put them on the computer, and suddenly I'm looking at it straight on, and I think, that's a horrible perspective. And I have to go back and fix it. And I go back on the drawing board, and I'm drawing at this angle again. It was impossible. So, uh, Frank Cho came over for dinner the other night. We had a good time, and he looked, took one look at my drawing board and said, why do you have that angle? You know, I have mine up, and I'm looking straight at it. And, you know, Frank has no perspective problems. And I thought, Is, how can I be so blind? So, first thing I did um, the next day was get out my tools and raise my drawing board and change it. And now... I can look and I can see the top and the bottom at the same time. And when I'm drawing, I'm just right here and I can see the whole thing, top to bottom in perspective, just like I'm looking at it on the computer. And it's made all the difference in the world. So the drawing angle matters. Um, you need to be able to look and see the top and the bottom of your drawing, if possible, uh, unless you're drawing huge. But um, at some point, you've got to have a straight on perspective. If you get it at an angle, good luck. <laughs> that's all. I, that's my advice for the week. Okay.